Hello everyone. This video was originally written as a response to a friend on my Facebook about an article I posted about the Australian government blocking visas for partners if they don't speak English. I provided the link to the article in the description of this video. So my friend's comment was, you do know at a guess 99% of these people are after money, a visa to Australia, etc. And what happens in Thailand should stay in Thailand. She was talking about the 3,000 plus people who are on my Facebook, many of which are from Thailand or the Philippines. I posted a video about how I gained these quote unquote friends some time ago. So if you're interested in the background of that, check out my previous video on the topic. And here we go. My response, which I haven't posted on my Facebook, but I'm gonna talk about it now. Many of these people see me as a Western man, as an income source in their countries. I therefore have adopted their view and I see them as a potential income source in my country by them providing their labor and their services in a business that I own. As an example, there is a potentially large opportunity for creating businesses here in Australia that replicate the booming, this is pre-COVID-19, the booming nightlife related businesses over in Thailand and the Philippines. These businesses are all illegal at the moment here in Victoria, as alcohol and sex work together under the same roof, i.e. a Thai or Filipino style bar, is illegal. One person or one company owning multiple brothels is also illegal. Bringing Thais or Filipinos to Australia for this work especially is complex and fraught with problems as sex work is not listed by the Australian government as a skilled occupation which is wrong, it should be. And the list goes on and on, creating a situation that is highly discriminatory and high risk for the workers, managers and owners of the businesses. This should not be the case in 2020 in Australia that prides itself on a fair go for all. This might however change shortly as the government is conducting a review into sex work in Victoria which will likely result in the industry being fully decriminalised, which the industry has been campaigning about for decades now. Myself and several of my business associates and potential investors are watching on closely to see what opportunities might come of this as the legislation is updated and changed for the better. What happens in Thailand can't happen in Melbourne due to bad legislation, at least for now. So what a lot of people seem to have missed is the rise of feminism and equality in the Western world has created a lot of opportunity in this kind of space. But the sex work legislation has not yet changed and the large profits of running a chain of Thai-style bars staffed with Thai or Filipino sex workers can't be tapped legally until this happens. Now, I could become a criminal and do it illegally but I would be shut down very quickly by the Victorian police, and that's not of interest to me. Legitimate job creation and sustainable business creation and long-term operation is of interest to me. Now, it may be that I never go into owning or managing this kind of business myself, but it shocked me how bad and unfair the draconian sex work laws are here in Victoria. They create perverse, unintended consequences, i.e. all the pop-up illegal brothels in Melbourne are the predictable result of this bad legislation, which I've made a video about in the past. It shocked me enough for me to make a submission to the review that's underway based on my knowledge and my experience in Thailand and how things should be done here in Australia to make the rules fair and equitable for all involved. Of note, during my time trying to live a life of freedom on my terms, I've come up against a lot of problems due to government legislation. Funny that. All those millions of men from around the world that travel to Thailand each year also have to do so due to bad legislation or religious control and bullshit in their home countries. 
The female dream, better homes and gardens and a family circle. The male dream, access to as many beautiful women as desired without the risk of rejection. Living the female dream, easy, legal, government trips over themselves to make it happen and provide support. The Western world is the ultimate place to fulfill this dream for a woman and your role as a man is to make that dream possible for a woman at your time and your expense. Living the male dream. If you want to do that, prepare to travel. Prepare to travel to third world countries on your own dime and prepare to dodge bullets in your home country, mostly in the form of government legislation that says you can't do that. If you try to live the same lifestyle here as you do in the developing world. All the best, everyone. I'm The Pretender.